becoming emotional. Maybe we should just put it up on the screen so that it reminds you of uh, what we're talking about this morning. So we're talking about becoming emotionally intelligent. Let's say it together. Becoming emotionally intelligent. In fact, speak to your neighbor and say, are you emotionally intelligent? Hallelujah. That's the question you will, you will answer as we go on, all right? So by the end of this topic, what I want to make sure is that um, at least you have some form of... Is that me? Okay. All right. So what I want to make sure is that at the end of this service, you have learned what it means to be emotionally intelligent and how we can, and this, how this can translate into us being better Christians and even becoming better citizens for the country. Hallelujah. All right. So becoming emotionally intelligent. So we're going to read two texts this morning. You know how we do it, right? We're going to read out loud together. So everybody open your Bibles, bring out your writing materials. We're about to move with the Spirit of God this morning. So in case you didn't come with writing materials, you are very wrong. You are very, very wrong. All right? So whether you are typing on your phone or something, make sure you're writing this morning, okay? All right? Okay, so let's learn something this morning. So we're reading, first of all, Proverbs chapter 25, verse 28. We're reading the NLT translation. Proverbs 25, verse 28. Proverbs 25, verse 28. Let's have the NLT. If we can have it on the screen, that will be nice. I want every one of us to read it out loud together. Proverbs 25, verse 28. Proverbs 25, verse 28. Do we have it yet? The NLT translation. Okay, I better open it here just in case um, we have some delay from the media. Proverbs chapter 25, verse 28 in NLT. And um, I believe this is going to be very beneficial to you as a child of God. And as we navigate our, our, you know, our lives, um, Proverbs chapter 25, verse 28. Are you there yet? Okay, do we have it on the screen yet? Okay, so we're going to read out loud together. Everybody look up here now. Look up, look up, look up, look up. Okay, look up. Everybody look up. So we're going to read out loud together, okay? Proverbs 25, verse 28. And you really like put some gospel in your voice. You know the kind of vibe that I want, right? What kind of vibes do I want? I want fried rice and chicken vibes, right? Don't give me no okra soup vibe. Don't give me no obono soup vibe, all right? Give me some fried rice and chicken peri-peri. You know, some of you are already hungry the way I've been saying it now. Okay. So give me some fried rice and chicken vibes. Are you ready? All right. Everybody, one, two, ready, go. Ah, uh, you didn't read it like you meant it. Let's read it one more time. One, two, ready, go. A person without self-control is like a city. Ah, this is powerful. A person without self-control is like a city with broken down walls now let's look at the message translation i love the message translation let's see what the message translation says let's go that very quickly and um, the message translation very quickly look at this this is not complete right do you have the complete part of it okay you don't have it okay i'm just going to read it for you all right the message translation very interesting it says oh do they have it there no a person without self-control is like a house with its doors and windows knocked out. NLC says, a person without self-control is like a city with broken down walls. Hallelujah. All right, so now keep that in one hand. Now let's look at Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. We're going to read New King James now. Um, some of, those of you that like, um, those of you that are children of King James. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. So let's switch back to the new, um, new King James Version. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. Verse 22, 22, 22 and 23. So we're going to read New King James Version very quickly. Ah, it's already six minutes. It's not so time to take a run. All right. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, Peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. Verse 23. Verse 23. Verse 23. Verse 23. Verse 23. Verse 23. Meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. So last week we began to share on the subject of the mind and how it is the medium or gateway to your spirit. 
We said man is a tripartite being, right? We said man is a spirit, uh huh. He has a soul, and what? He lives in a body. So man is essentially a spirit being first. He has a soul, and he lives in a body. And the entrance to your body is your five senses. All right, we talked about it last week, right? And so your five senses basically is what gives access to your mind. So whatever enters through your body filters into your mind. So your body, your five senses are the gateway into your mind. And first of all, and we said there are two portions of your mind, right? We said there is the conscious mind and there is what? subconscious mind so when something enters into your conscious mind you can forget it in fact you can wake up to the morning and then forget about it but repetition is what makes it settle into your subconscious mind in other words the more that information comes in again and again and again and again after a while it settles into your subconscious mind so much so that you don't even have to look at it this is the reason why they do some adverts on TV and you can sing along with them. You remember, right? There are some adverts on TV that the moment it starts like this, you know, you just already know. For example, the, there is this picnic advert. I used to watch this. this. From generation to generation. Some of you were not born then, so let's, let's not go there. Hallelujah. You know. You know I mean, I, I, I'm sure, but, but I'm sure that there are adverts on TV you can remember, right? There was no lyrics. They didn't play any lyrics. What made it settle into your subconscious mind? Because you kept hearing it, what? Repeatedly. So, repetition is the force that pushes it from your conscious mind into what? Your subconscious mind. So, in the same way, when you receive God's word, if you re receive it repeatedly, guess what happens? It settles into your subconscious mind it's just like how we were saying this morning um during our discipleship class and then we were teaching that you know we should learn to use the word of god to pray right we we're talking about pauline prayers those of you that attend this discipleship class remember all right so we were we we're reading from the book of Ephesians, chapter 3 verse 16 we said and paul was preaching and paul was praying he said that um that you know he said that um for this cause i bow my knees to the father of glory that he what you be strengthened uh-huh with might by the spirit in the inner man. Now, imagine if you were to say it every single day of your life. After a while, you don't have to look at it again, right? Now, if I say everybody, John 3.16, we all know what John 3.16 is, right? Some of you may not have ever even opened it in your life. Oh, come on. It's true now. But you know what's written there. Why? Because you've heard it quoted. They've been quoting it to you virtually all your life. That's the reason why you can say it. So, something settles in your subconscious mind through repetition so repetition is what moves information from your conscious mind into your subconscious mind and whatever enters into your subconscious mind is what forms your predominant thoughts not what is in your conscious mind are you with me this morning so far are we good oh come on talk to me are we good all right so whatever moves or whatever is in your subconscious mind is what forms your predominant thoughts. And that's why the Bible tells us in Proverbs 23 verse 5. He said, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. In other words, your predominant thoughts, whatever it is you have in your mind, is what you will act out. That is what will dictate the actions of your life. So, anything you do, anything you do is based on what is already in your mind. So, if somebody walks up to you and gives you a slap on the face, best believe that that person has been thinking about it. Nobody just wakes up and just slap. I don't feel like slapping you. Does it work like that? The person has already thought about it. He, in fact, he premeditated. He said, ah, if I open my hand like this, if you know pain, I'm well. You know, I will set my hand like this. You know what I'm saying? So, can somebody relate to that? <laughs> so what we are saying is that what controls your life your action is based on your what on your predominant thoughts hmm. are you still here so this is what makes up a predominant and that's what makes you who you are and this is the principle behind social media this is the principle behind the internet this is the principle behind tv this is the reason why they keep showing you those things over and over again i told you last week that the last american elections over um i think over 
um, $30 billion was spent on campaigns by both Donald Trump and Kamala Harris. I didn't say million. I said billion. Why do you think they are spending so much money on campaign? You'll be wondering, what's the point? The idea is to get information into your mind. So whatever it is that you look upon constantly, whatever you feed yourself with through your five senses, enters into your conscious mind, repetition that drives it into your subconscious mind, then you start to act like that. That is, that's the principle. That's how it works. So because the media know this thing, so anything they want you to believe, they will continue to feed you with it. That's the principle of social media. So whatever it is you're doing right now, whatever, how, however you're living your life, in fact, even to the point of how you dress, it's because of what you have been fed, the information. If you were born in another part of the world, right, chances are you would dress differently because you received a different programming or information. So what the information that you receive on the internet, on the media, on TV, on radio, whatever it is, whatever kind of media, all right, whatever information you receive from there is basically programming you. Are we together? So it's a programming. It programs your mind to act in certain ways. I was listening to a man of God just over um, on, 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 I think it was on, on TikTok. I was just watching a, a pastor preach. He said, you know, he was dressed one morning. He said he looked at the mirror and he looked and he looked at himself and he said, ah, fine boy. And, said, and he wanted to step out of the house. And the wife said, eh, 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 where are you going dressed like this? Oga, no, no, it's not me and you. He said, ah, but I just looked at myself and I thought I'm a fine boy. The, the wife said, no, it's not me and you. You can't go out dressed like this. You want to come and disgrace our family. It's not possible. Now, what was he wearing? He was wearing stripes on stripes. Now, in his mind, he feels he looks good. But the wife said, oh God, no way. <laughs> you know they come out. You can't go out like this. Can he wear stripes on stripes? Question, who told you? How do you know stripes on? It's not what the media has made us believe. Oh, come on, talk to me. Is that not true? There was a time in the history of the world when if you wear blue or yellow, they would say you are doing what? What, are, wait, what do we call it? They would say you are doing... But nowadays, what would they call it? Now, they would say... Now, if you now wear black on black, they say you are too... What is it now? You are too monochrome. I don't know if there's something... Uh, you know. So, but you, that's why fashion is confused. Oh, yes. There was a time in this world when you wear two different colors. They would say you are color royalty. Now is the in thing. They will tell you, uh, you know, you can't wear black, black on black. It is too monochrome. So that tells you that it is a programming. Whatever the media tells you, that's what you believe. And this is the reason why some of these popular figures, some of these artists, anything they do becomes trend. And it, in fact, anything they say becomes trend. Abby? Somebody said Zazu, everybody's saying it. Somebody said, ah, why they whine me? Somebody started it, I hope you know. Are you, are you, are you following my, my teaching this morning? So anything that, if anything, that, and you know, the, the amazing thing about Nigeria is that uh, a lot of times, um, most of the things that we call slangs today, somebody started it. When we started saying, uh, you, you go explain, explain, no evidence. I heard it was Bernard Boyd that said it. Was he the one that said it? You, so you see, this is how the media works. It is a programming. Even if you don't want to say it, even if because somebody is saying next to you and then another, what's, what's the one they are saying nowadays? There's one they keep saying nowadays. I'm trying to remember right now. Um, help me, help me, help me, help me now. Come on. Eh? I will lie for you. Ah. Suspect. Suspect is, uh, Abby? That's it, right? <laughs> Glory to God. Now, but, 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 now I, I'm not saying, listen, I, I'm not saying that every trend is bad. What I'm saying is that it is actually a what? Programming. Are we, are we together? So it's a programming. Now, how do these things work? That's the power of media. I told you last week that media is from the word medium. Medium is in the middle. In other words, it's the one that gets the information into your mind. You see that now? Are you still here? 
All right, so let's move forward. Now, we said last week that our soul, you know, man is a spirit, right? He has a soul and he lives in a body, isn't it? So the spirit man is a real you. Your soul. Now, when you got born again, which part of you got born again? Your spirit, Abby. If any man be in Christ, he is new creation. Uh huh. All things have passed away. Yes. All things have become new. So that spirit man was regenerated in Christ. But you see, the soul did not get born again. Remember we said that last week, right? The soul didn't get born again. In fact, your body didn't change. Not like when you got born again, you were dark and then all of a sudden you became light skin. We have to suspect you if that's what happened. Okay? So your spirit man is got born again but your soul now we said your soul is comprised of three things right can you remember somebody tell me your mind uh-huh your will uh-huh and your emotions so one more time let's say it again your mind uh-huh your will and your emotions that's your soul this one needs to be managed well why because it's the intermediary between your body and what and your spirit are we following so whatever you allow your body, to, whatever information you allow your body to receive through your five senses, all right, your mind is the one that we articulate it and then push it into your spirit to now receive it. And that's what makes you up. Now, this soul of, a, of, of an entity that we've been talking about, right? Now, it, it, it's got the mind. We, we talked a lot about the mind. But let's talk about the emotion now. Let's talk about the emotion. Okay. Let's talk about emotions. Now, what is an emotion, essentially? All right? So, the simple way to talk about an emotion or to define an emotion is that it's a feeling. It's a feeling. One of my teachers back in school say feeling. They always pronounce the G at the back. Feeling. So, an emotion is a feeling. That's just a simple way to understand it. All right? Now, there are several chemicals in your brain, and I'm not even going to all the biochemistry and all of that, that come into play when we feel something, all right? Now, first of all, emotions are not necessarily bad. God created us with emotions. Now, if we are created in the image of God, even God has emotions. Do you know that? God has emotions. Now, we're going to prove it in the Bible. Let's look at it very quickly. Let's see Genesis chapter 6, verse 5 and 6, very quickly. We're running... I'm running with time. Genesis chapter 6. We're trying to prove that God has emotions, right? So God can feel something. Okay, before we open that scripture, you can put it on the screen, but let's quickly talk about this. Now, um, we have two kinds of emotion, right? We have positive emotions, uh huh, and then we have what? Negative emotions. So let's mention the positive emotions, the ones that you can remember. Positive emotions. We can have happiness, right? Excitement, gratitude, hope, calmness, love. These are all positive emotions, right? Any other one you can remember? You know? Any other one? Any other one you can remember? Okay, maybe love. Okay. Excitement. All right. These are all positive emotions. So what about negative emotions? Ah, that one. <laughs> Anger. Uh-huh. All right. Sadness. Sorrow. Yeah. What else? Envy. Jealousy. Right? What else? What? Depression. Okay. Fear. Exactly. So these are all negative emotions. So can God get angry? Regret, is it, is, it, is it a negative emotion? All right, so let's see if God has emotions, right? Genesis chapter 6, verse 5 and 6. We're trying to prove that God has emotions too. All right, Genesis chapter 6, verse 5 and 6. Genesis chapter 6, chapter 6, verse 5. Now, look at this right here. He says, and God saw that the wickedness of man was what? Great in the earth, and that the imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only what? evil continually now look at verse 6 verse 6 let's go and it repented the lord that he had made man on earth and see so king james sometimes can make it very funny let's look at maybe nlt for example if you have an lt give us an lt the verse 6 of nlt now you'll understand that god has emotions let's see nlt look at this come read it together once ready go so the lord was sorry he had made them and put them on earth it did what Aye. it broke his heart so you see God has emotions so you can be doing something and God's heart will be broken God is saying hi this boy this boy Is that how God feels about you today God is looking at you like this and he's like ah 
What a pity. Or is God proud of you and say, yeah, that's my boy. All right. Now, you are proving that God has emotions, right? Let's look at another scripture again. 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 10. 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 10. Now, of course, this was the story of Solomon, right? Solomon, when he became king, some of us know this story. God told him to ask for whatever he wanted, right? And what did Solomon ask for? He asked for what? Come on, talk to me. He asked for what? He asked for wisdom. So now, what was God's response when Solomon... Solomon could have asked for anything. He could have asked for money. I'm sorry for some of you. You see, God says, ask for what? Ah, God, anything. Hey, God. Ooh, glory, glory, hallelujah. Fair, make I first use one billion dollars first for my account. Make it, a, you know. All right, make it, make it a breathe first, you know. Then I will, now, I will now think of wisdom later. But look at Solomon right here. So now, when Solomon asks for wisdom, look at what happened there. Verse 10, he says, And the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. God was happy with the guy. God said, Ah, this boy gets sense. So you don't even think so you want money. God said, ah, because of what you asked, now I will not even give you money. So much so. You see, God was so happy with him that God said to him, look, nobody on earth will be ever richer than you. Do you know that the richest man in the world today, Elon Musk, still is not as rich as Solomon? Just because God was happy with the guy. You see what emotions can do? God was just happy with him. God said, ah, I, I swear. Oh, no, I, I, I'm God. I can't swear. <laughs> and God said, you know what? Nobody will ever have money than you. Nobody. Elon Musk today, his net worth in billions of dollars, is still not as rich as Solomon. I'm telling you. The Bible says in the days of Solomon, they said gold was like stones on the street. You know what's in me? Gold. Guys, I'm not talking about gold plated. It was like stone in the days. And it was so common that if you're holding gold, not like nothing, nothing today. Imagine in, in, in Nigeria where driving Benz is in a mountain. Or did they use Benz to taxi? Oh God. When I went to, when I went, where, where was it? I think it was Dubai. And I went to Dubai. And then I, all the cars, where would they use to do Bugafa here? <laughs> oh God. May God bless you. And their king's, their king's palace, right? Um, so I, I think I still have the picture on my phone. So I was there and then there was a police patrol vehicle. They just put it there. Nobody was driving it home. It was a police patrol vehicle. Guess what that police patrol vehicle was? A G-Wagon. Where somebody will, need, somebody will now say, God has just blessed me with a new whip. Now, what's the person they use to do patrol car? I said, may God bless you. <sighs> Where were we? <laughs> we're talking about emotions, right? So God has emotions, isn't it? So because we are created in his him image, so we also have emotions, right? So although you have emotions, but this is where the problem really lies. Even though God created you with emotions, he doesn't expect you to be controlled by them. This is where the problem is. All right? So we are not meant to be controlled by emotions. Let's see Romans chapter 8 verse 14. Romans chapter 8 verse 14. The Bible tells us something very quickly. I want us to open it. Oh, thank you, Lord. Romans chapter 8 verse 14. Romans chapter 8 verse 14. Let's see what it says. No. Romans chapter 8 verse 14. Romans chapter 8 verse 14. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? All right. He says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of who? Of God. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, not by emotions. So, as children of God, we are to be led by the Spirit. The Spirit of God is the Holy Spirit, correct? So we are to be led by the Holy Spirit, not by emotions. Our emotions should not lead us. We should be led by the Spirit. So in other words, your emotions should not dictate your actions. So, what we are saying in essence is that how you feel, we said emotions are feelings, isn't it? How you feel should not dictate what you do. Let's make a practical example. Okay, alright, so now somebody did something to me and I'm angry, you know. Now, there are several things I can do, right? If it's a lady, ladies will prefer to use words, right? Ah, 
yap. You know, there are some people that know how to yap. If they yap you like this, you think about your life. There's this comedian I watched online, one Ozane guy. Do you guys know that guy? That guy, if he, oh my, I don't know how he does it. I don't know where he digs it out from. He, oh, Jesus Lord. I was like, so some people's gift is in yabi. So I'm wondering how creative, like some people are so creative in, ah. Now, imagine somebody like that is yabbing you. The only weapon or the only response you want to do is what? Oh boy, make a. <laughs> oh boy, if I, if I nod you, <laughs> you know that kind of thing, right? And that's what guys will typically do. Nine out of ten times, guys don't have time for words. The moment you say one or two things like this, the next thing is what? You result into physical blow, Abby. So now, I feel angry, and so my response is to fight, Abby. But now, <laughs> as a Christian, the Bible is telling us that instead of letting your emotions control you, you should be controlled by the Spirit. Now, your spirit is already infused with who? With the Holy Spirit. So now the Bible is telling us, move from the emotional realm to the spirit realm. Now somebody say, oh, Pastor, is that, not pretend- is that not pretending? No. That's not pretense. I-, I like to call it superimposition. What does that mean? You use your spirit to kill the works of the flesh. That's what the Bible tells in that Galatians chapter 5. He said, you, through the spirit, you mortify the deeds of the flesh. So if your life is essentially spirit controlled, emotions will not be, will not mean anything to you. You will feel it, then go feel it, Abi. One popular comedian, uh, sorry. <laughs> Abi? Uh-huh. Minister David, Abi. Minister David. He said, then go feel it. <laughs> and I feel like we're feeling it in Nigeria right now, you know. Maybe him and, me, him and, um, um, Tunubu, I think they combined to write that song. He said, then go feel it. And we are really feeling it, isn't it? When you look at the price of fuel now. Anyways, I'm just digressing. So now, instead of moving from the realm of feeling, you now move to the realm of the Holy Spirit. Of someone who has been, who is led by the Holy Spirit. That's what the Bible is telling us. He said, for as many that are led by the Spirit of God, those are the sons of God. Not those, not those who are led by their feelings. So how you feel should not dictate how you act. Meaning that you can feel angry, but you can choose not to fight. Are you following? It's a choice. You can feel some type of way, but choose not to act on those feelings. You cannot stop birds from hovering over your head, but you can stop them from making a nest there. Okay. I remember a popular um, American president. I believe it was Bill Clinton. He said something. He said, I don't make decisions at the extremes of emotion. In other words, he said, I never take any decision when I'm tired. You know when you're tired and somebody says, give me now, give me now. Okay, okay. Why? So you'll be taking that decision out of desperation for comfort. So he says he never takes decisions at the extremes of emotions. And you see, the reason why you cannot do that is because emotions are temporary. The, 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 the right word to use is they are transient. E- emotions are temporary. Meaning that you feel it now, the next minute you never feel like that. And the unfortunate thing is that if you choose to act on temporary feelings, you will mess things up. And you see, again, this is another problem with many young people. They choose to make permanent decisions on temporary feelings. Let me say it one more time. The problem with many young people is that they choose to make permanent decisions on what? Temporary feelings. You just feel excited, you know, and all of that, and you're just happy and all of that. And then you now declare, everybody here, I declare everybody, food for everybody. Then, when the excitement wears down, you now remember that, uh, oh boy, ah, what's it, what, what's it even moving? You did it out of excitement. Temporary feelings, t- permanent decisions on temporary feelings. It's the same thing that happens in relationships. You know, there's no how we talk and I will not touch it. Oh, I love him, Pastor. Oh, I love, I love him. Oh, God. <laughs> (laughs) 
Anyways, let's keep that for now. So when you make permanent decisions on temporary feelings, it many a time will lead to regrettable actions. So we've got to be careful. So what is the key to emotional intelligence? The key to emotional intelligence, now we said there is positive Abby and there is negative emotions. So number one is to always keep positive emotions in check. Positive emotions are good, but you must keep them in what? In check. You must check them. You must check them. Don't get overexcited. That's why the Bible tells us, you know, if you look at Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 1, it says, don't let the excitement of youth for cause you to forget your creator. That's what King, King James says, remember now your creator in the days of your youth. But if you read, I think it was the NLT that said, do not let the excitement of being young cause you to forget your creator. In other words, excitement can cause you to do stupid things. You can take foolish this. In fact, we need to say this. And it goes without saying. Look, the opposite of emotional intelligence is emotional foolishness. Some people are emotionally foolish. You see some things that you say, this, is, this does not even make sense. So, we must keep positive emotions in check. What am I trying to say? Always use your brain. Tell your neighbor, say, use your brain, use your brain, use your brain. You're not, tell them, I'm not insulting you. I'm not insulting you. Tell them, tell them, say, I'm not insulting you. Use your brain. It's important. It's important as Christians. We must, you, you, why did God put that thing inside your skull? You have to use it. To whom brain is given, sense is expected. Are you still here? Use your brain. It's not everything. You just be, you just be, you just, ah, I don't understand how it goes. This is the same reason why you will see a guy, obvious red flag. Obvious red flag. The thing is staring at you like this in the face. You use the red flag and do rapper. Pastor, it's not that bad. And it's just once in a while. You can see a guy, the guy, you can tell, this one go beat you for house. Somebody who already every now and then gets drunk, what do you think is going to happen? And he's just once in a, he doesn't really drink like that. He's just two bottles, pastor. Hey, dear Lord. The red flag is there, staring at you. You can see it for yourself. But, hey. Should I say this? Should I say this? Should I say this? <laughs> Do you know that the reason some men, or I don't know whether ladies or guys, the reason why they cannot leave some relationship is because of sex? Now, now talk to me. Should we continue? Some people are saying, Pastor, Pastor, you don't they, you don't they go to. Should we continue? All right, let's go there. So let's go there for a minute. This is the reason why some people cannot leave some relationships. Because they, will, they are thinking of what they will miss. Some people, because of financial gain, for them, their relationship is a poverty alleviation scheme. So because of that, they can't leave. Oh, yes. Even when the red flags are staring at them in the face, it is nothing but emotional foolishness. See, these things have to be said. There's no need preaching high falutin things, things that will fly over our heads. Let's, Yoruba people say, let's talk where the talk is, Abi. Let's talk where the talk is. This is the truth. It is nothing but emotional foolishness. The red flags are there. Even your friends are telling you, ah, babe, this thing, this guy, you say, no. No. You, do, have you noticed that when people are in love, there's no point advising them? That's why till tomorrow, I don't give people relationship advice. Because when they said to, <laughs> now on top your head, then go set to. <laughs> Oh, God. This is what happens all the time. 
I don't give, see, so tomorrow, uh, see, let me even tell you one, one thing I do. Somebody comes, eh, pastor, he's this, he's this, he's da, da, da. I'll say, okay, so what do you have in mind? What are, what are you thinking? What's in, what's in your mind? The person comes and says, eh, pastor, I'm thinking of, saying that thing you want to do, eh, that's the one. <laughs> now me, you go put for trouble. <laughs> uh, there's no point advising somebody who's when they're in love like this. Forget it. Nothing you say. He could just he, they, he, they, 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 they won't hear. They will still be giving excuses. That's what happens many a time. So we must keep positive emotions in check so when you love love with your heart but please take your brain with you did you hear that i said what i said take with you take your brain with you don't just love foolishly they say love is black look let me tell you beating will open it for some people even with beating self you never see open up he will beat the, the, the guy will beat the girl like this the girl will be like i was the one that provoked him it was, it's my fault. It's not you. It's, ha. I make I nod you. Hey, God. Red flags, obvious in relation. You will see it like this. So, even this thing we call love, in the realm of emotions, it must be backed up with your brain. Now, let's look at what happens in our relationship with the Lord in Christianity. The Bible says we love him because he first loved us. Look at how it works in the realm of the spirit. The Bible says that the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit that is given to us. That is love with a brain. The love of God is shed abroad in our heart. By who? By the Holy Ghost. So you are filled with the Holy Spirit. You can express yourself to him in prayer. Father, I just love you with all of my heart. Thank you, Jesus. That's no senseless love. You're not just loving like a robot. But why is it that in our own daily lives? Ah. So positive emotions must be put in check. That's what I'm telling you. You must put them in check. Don't get too excited so much so that you start doing stupid things. That is emotional foolishness. Some people now, the moment they small money enters their account like this, they'll just start eating anyhow. Say, chop now. <laughs> chop now. You say, oh boy, forget all those things. Any money will enter my hand like this. Now enjoyment. You guys remember that, that, that trend, right? They say, don't see a bag of cement in every money, Abby. They chop that money. Oh boy. I'll cheer you. Exactly. They say chop life, Abby. Chop life, make life, no chop you. Is that what they say? Don't let, see, that's what we're talking about. Don't let the excitement cause you to lose your brain. You start eating anyhow. Now, December is coming. You say dirty December, Abby. Is that not? Oh, uh, he's obli, Abby. He's obli, okay. I'm t- I'm, if you have a dirty December, see, your, your January is going to be very clean. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> your, your January go clean. I know, say, wait, I know, say, January day long. <laughs> Are you still here? So we must keep positive emotions in check, all right? Don't get overexcited and you start doing anyhow. You start, oh boy, money, do, oh boy, money day. Hey, don't, don't be like that. Don't be like that. Then negative emotions. So what do we do to negative emotions? So we must know how to handle negative emotions. All right, I'm going to run through this one very fast because we don't have a lot of time. We must know how to handle negative emotions. Number one thing about negative emotions is that we must know, we must acknowledge them. Somebody say, acknowledge them. Say it again. Say, acknowledge them. So what we are saying is that when you feel any kind of negative emotion, maybe it's anger, maybe it's resentment, maybe it's jealousy, you must first of all admit and acknowledge that it is there. Don't deny them. All right, I'll have had Chef Sam and some of our guys act something out this morning, but we don't have time. You, do you know that thing that happens when you say, Are you okay? See, I'm, I'm fine. Are you sure? I'm okay. Ah, why is your face like this? Is it by force? I say I'm fine. What's your problem? 
leave me, I'm fine. And this happens in relationships a lot. Talk to me now, I'm fine. Ah. Leave me now, I'm fine. She's still carrying face up. Just like, mm. I, I, I know your face is not usually like this. Talk to me. I, I said there's no problem. There's no problem. Why are you disturbing me? Leave me alone. I said there's no problem. And she's walking away. Like, you better go and grab her. Because if you let her go, so I, in fact, I'm even going self. She now goes, she now waits at the door. <laughs> Thinking you're going to come after her. Say, eh. So that's how you know, you know. But I thought I just asked you now if there's any problem. Eh. That's why sometimes women can be complicated. They, 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 how do they say it? They, they do the opposite of what they really mean. So when a girl is leave, saying, leave me, she's actually saying, come to me. So, uh, wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Let's put it in context, though. Don't go and grab, don't go and grab somebody's, <laughs> before they go slap you. And you now say, pastor, <laughs> are you there? So what we are saying is that, learn to admit to how you feel, okay? So you feel some type of way. Admit that it is there. Don't deny and say, mm, it's not there. I'm okay, I'm, it's a lie. Admit that it's there. The number one is what? Acknowledge it. Don't deny them. Okay, denying or suppressing them will only drive them deeper into your subconscious mind where they now may now cause more hurt. All right, acknowledge them. Mr. Temi, you always say it's okay to cry. Are you following what I'm saying? So, when you if you feel like crying, guess what? Cry when you cry very well. By the time you are done, you feel better, right? So, don't hold it. The only thing I always say is that don't cry in front of people. Though. You know, I've told you that stuff before, right? If a man says he's not doing it again, no problem. Don't cry. don't go there and be, oh, baby, please, baby, baby, please. No! Ah, why are you disgracing the, the remaining of your family? Don't do that. What is that? Uh-uh. Baby, now what did I do to you? <laughs> you know it's only you that I know. <laughs> don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. All right? Just tell him, okay, okay, no problem, no problem. Um, you want to break up, right? No problem. Um, so, my charger that is in your house, please. Uh, let me collect it. Um, in fact, if you, want, if you want to be a big girl, right? If you want to be a big girl. See, this, this is the phone you bought for me. Let me remove my SIM card. Oh, yes. Maybe that Are you there? Say, is there no, Abby? Is there no? <laughs> All right. All right. Now, I'm telling you how to be a big girl. Though. Okay. You don't want that part. You don't want that part. Okay. Scrap that part. Scrap that part. Okay. So what do you do? All right. So now, um, all the little things that are, that are, that are he is uh, with you. So give him back. Okay. Um, let me collect my charger and all of that. So if he's the kind of guy that has a car, all right, don't say drop me at the box stop. Say drop me now. I'm coming out. Just park. Come down. Call your friends. Um, Chidima, I, I'm coming to the house now. Now go to Chidima's house and you can have what? Cry. So what I'm saying is that what? It's okay to cry. Are we following here? So acknowledge them. Don't deny them. Don't suppress them. Don't behave like they don't exist. Acknowledge them. Number two, process them. Process them. Somebody say process them. So what are we saying? Sometimes it makes sense to pause before you react. Sometimes it makes sense to pause. And this one takes a bit of training because it's not going to come easy. Because at the height of anger, when person vex you, or more, it be like me, it just ah, like if you've not trained yourself to do this, it will be difficult. So you must learn to process your feelings. You must learn. To, so sometimes it makes sense to pause and react before you react. Are you following what I'm saying here? James chapter 1, verse 19 and 20. What does it tell us? James 1, 19 to 20. Let's quickly look at it. James chapter 1, verse 19 to 20. Very quickly, very quickly, very quickly. James 1, 19 to 20. Thank you, Jesus. James chapter 1, verse 19 to 20. Do we have it yet? Do we have it yet? All right, look at this right here. It says, wherefore... Let's use New King James, please. Can, can we use New King James? Because... Um, King James has a way of, uh... all right, can we have a new King James? Are we good? All right, excellent. He says, so then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift 
to hear and what? Slow to speak, slow to wrath. Look at that right there. In, in other words, you should be quick to hear. Sometimes you need to listen. See, there is a problem with our generation. We know they hear what? We get coconut head. We just want to talk. You just, all you want to do is talk. You just want to be heard. But to listen, no. What the Bible is telling you is that sometimes when you feel certain types of way, listen, calm down, relax. You just big, 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 big. You know, I, I used to have one of my co-workers. And it's not big, big. She's just, ah, calm down. Relax first. Try and understand what's going on before you start reacting. Don't just be someone that, don't be just, the moment they punch one button like this, bim, you've exploded. Pause. We are saying that you must learn to process your emotions. Sometimes you need to ask yourself questions. Why do I feel the way I feel? Sometimes you've got to ask questions. You need to know what your triggers are. For example, you know, some people, some people are, are, are proud of the fact that ah, in my family, we are very temperamental. Some people are proud of it. Ah, in my family, we are, used to have bad temper in my family. Don't come near me. Fire for fire. Ah, that's emotional foolishness. Emotional what? Emotional what? Emotional foolishness. Ah, in my family, we used to have bad temper. To come near us, we'll fire you. If I, if you come, we'll gun you down. Emotional what? Foolishness. And, and the stupid one that, that young people now do nowadays is uh, all these uh, horoscopes. I'm a, I'm a Sagittarius. I'm a Cancer. I'm a Kiniko. I'm a... <laughs> See, let me just tell you. When, when people start to give excuses for bad character with, their, with something that some guys pointed in the stars, again, I tell you, it is nothing but emotional what? Foolishness. You say, I'm a cancer. I don't used to. Are, are, you, are you okay? Are you okay? <laughs> cancer called malaria. Baleo. Crayfish. What is that? So, so I mean, you are, in fact, let me just say it this way. There are, process your feelings. Do you know there are some people too? They like sympathy. Oh, you don't know them? They like, sorry, but that's the only thing that makes them feel good. It is emotional immaturity. It is immaturity. You are waiting for people to tell you sorry. Ah, you know, step on me. You can't even say sorry. Move on with your life. You are waiting for someone to tell you sorry. You just like sympathy. You know, you know, they like pity party. Everybody will not gather. Oh, Pele, sorry. Oh, it's sorry. It's okay. It's all right. In fact, it pain me, go. Ah, you've not seen those kinds of people. That is when people come around, they will not start crying. Oh, people, people don't know what's going on. The moment people gather like this, that's when they will not raise the alarm of the cry. Oh, in fact, somebody did it in my presence. I see, ah, ah. I was consulting in the clinic one time. So this guy, apparently, I think he had some issues, he had some pain. So we had already given him some painkillers and all of that. Oh, you know, and he was already feeling better and all of that. I was concerned. And then the next thing, his boss calls him. Oh, in fact, Oga, in fact, ah! Oga, the thing is paining me. In fact, if you see the amount of stitch they put on my leg, something. And I'm like, Jesus is Lord. Some people just like it. They just, they just like the fact that people have to pity you. People have to say sorry to you. You know, ah, it's emotional immaturity. If you're that kind of person, you need to shake it off. You don't need, you don't need people's sympathy. Something happens to you. Ah. So process your feelings. So you must know what your triggers are. All right? If you know, say, you be kind of person with the very touch. Don't, don't, don't be doing things that will make people annoy you all the time. You know what your triggers are. So identify your triggers. All right? And then sometimes you have to think, what could I have done better? What can I do better? Look at Genesis chapter 4. I want to quickly look at the story right there. All right? Because sometimes you can predict actions. See, sometimes when I'm driving on the road and I'm seeing the way one guy is driving, I'll give him some space. I say, this guy be like, person will vex me today. Are you following what I'm saying here? Oh, come on, talk to me. Are you following me? There's a way people will move in your life. You'll be like, this one be like, person will go vex me. What do you do to those kind of people? 
give them some space. This guy be like, the way, they, the way this guy they move, he be like, person go vex me. I have people like that. I, there are people like that. So I, I just give them their space. I say this one. So know what your triggers are. It's part of the emotional intelligence. You are being emotionally intelligent because you don't want somebody to trigger you. Are you following what I'm saying here? So avoid those kind of confrontations. Avoid, you say, they will say, oh, by more avoid to they speak English. Show. You know, because well, that's what happens. If you, if you are driving on the road and you hear two cars, bah, na English. You bash me, it did not bash me. You bash me, it did not bash me. Oh, na English. To so avoid speaking English and if you spoke, I speak, you cannot spark. Look, it's better to just what? <laughs> Give them some space. Identify your triggers. Are you still here? So process your emotions. We were reading Genesis chapter 4, right? I wanted to quickly show us very something. Uh, we don't have a lot of time. Maybe we're just going to skip it for now. All right? So process your emotions, all right? And this will allow you to know when to speak and when not to. All right? So in other words, something has happened now. And you're thinking about it. So in your mind, you're like, should I, should I not? So you will know whether to speak. You know, it's not every time, sometimes. Sometimes it's, it's wisdom to, to keep quiet. Do you know that? Imagine somebody's annoying you and he's shouting, you're mad, you're crazy. In fact, you know, the one we normally say now is your father. Your father this, your mother that. And you, you're just looking at him and just laughing. Like, yo, that one way they talk, <laughs> you know, you know, enter me. Do you know it will pain the person more? Ah, you don't know. It will pain the person more. When the person is busy shouting, screaming, doing all sorts, and you don't even talk, and you just look up. Mm, now you know. But because you feel like, hey, you, you abuse my mother. Oh, nobody talks to my mother. <laughs> Are you still here? So process your feelings. There is, there is stimulus and there is response. Stimulus is, comes from the outside. Response is how you react. That's why Jesus said that so that you have the right answer to give to everybody. You must know the time to talk. You must know when to not talk. You must know when to speak. You must know when not to speak. It's not every time. Talk, 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 talk. Everything you must. Ah, it's a lie. If I don't answer my own. Ah, no, 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 no. I can't, I can't take it. I can't take it. I must say my own. If I don't give an answer to you, you. It's a lie. Relax. Process. There are some people that don't deserve answers. Because you know that talking to them is a waste of your bloody time. There are some people that don't deserve answers. If you were talking to someone who is sensible, maybe it will make some sense. Let me give you an example. So one time, I was called upon. I was resting in the lodge. And I was told that uh, my, my nurse and the patient were having an altercation. And that patient happened to be one of the Oga's wives then. You know, one of the bosses. Meanwhile, she was recording the whole conversation. And the nurse was just there, blabbing. Is it like, is it because you are your you are, you are manager's wife? Is it because you are driving this car? Let me just tell you, even me, Seth, I have this, I have that. That one was busy recording. When I got to the scene, I said, Madam, can you, can you calm down? Then can I talk to you for a minute? I called her into the office. I started to speak to her. I thought the whole thing had been resolved. Before I drove out, my boss from Lagos called me and said, Dr. Wally, I need you to give a report on so-and-so that happened. And then that time I know you have on gas. That's why sometimes, see, is the only problem some people have in their lives is their mouth. They don't know how to keep quiet. The Bible says you should learn to keep quiet and mind your business. Every little thing, drew, 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 drew. You, every, most you put mouth in everything. This is the problem with some people. You mustn't, you, you mustn't put mouth in everything. Everything that happens, you must put your mouth. Sometimes just keep quiet. And it takes emotional maturity to do that. It's part of emotional intelligence. Another one that happened one time. So this woman comes into the clinic. I was in the clinic that day. And then, so now, ordinarily, she's not entitled to receive care in our clinic. So, um, because of the level of her husband, so now she comes to the clinic and then we see her and we ask her, okay, because um, we don't have our name on our, on our system. So we're like, okay, so what's your husband's grade? And then she tells us, okay, my husband is a supervisor. Now, meanwhile, the husband is a junior staff. 
she comes and says, my husband is supervisor. And what she doesn't know is that supervisors, based on our own rules, are actually not allowed to receive treatments because they already paid them medical allowance. She comes and claims her husband is a supervisor, meaning that she doesn't qualify for treatment. So she comes and she says, blah, 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 blah. So the nurse takes the vitals and everything, tells me about it. And then I say, okay, you know what? If your husband is a supervisor, that means you're not allowed, you're not qualified for treatment, but this is what we can do for you. We can just advise you on what to do, blah, blah, blah. She leaves. The moment she steps out of the clinic, she picks her phone, she calls her husband, and she says, eh, um, they didn't attend to me in the clinic. And then the husband, too, wanting to show power, comes to the clinic. Eh, you put no attend to my wife. This, 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 that, that, that. The, the, I was not there initially. Then the, the nurse and, 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 the, and the man were there exchanging words. I could hear their voice from the consulting room. So I step out. The guy was there making noise. How can you, you know, say this, that, that, that? You know, I said, sir, can I, can I see you for a minute, sir? If you don't mind. He said, no problem. He came. He sat down. I said, sir, please be seated. Um, your wife told us that you are a supervisor. So I wanted to ask, are you a supervisor or a junior staff? His body calmed down. See, eh? When people are making noise, if you say you carry fire for head, some people use water and quench it for you. <laughs> and that's me for you. If you like, carry, I will, I will calm you down. Like, see, there is a way to talk to people sometimes. I, I said, guy, wait, are you a junior staff? He said, he's a junior staff. I said, the information your wife gave us is that you are a supervisor. Meanwhile, he's been the one telling his wife at home that he's a supervisor. So now, I now said, okay, by law, you know that your wife is not even qualified for treatment, if truly you are a supervisor. But we still took her vitals, we did this, we did that. I said, so if we didn't see your wife, as she said, we, I brought out the documentation. How did we know that her blood pressure is X, Y, Z? How did we know that X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z? And I said, eh. So, but my wife said, you people did not treat her. I said, well, how do we know this? So I, I, are you trying to say that my wife is a liar? I said, I didn't say that. I'm just saying that the information she gave you is incorrect. <laughs> See, technicality. <laughs> now me, you won't catch. Ooh. I said, you, you see what I said? I'm not saying your wife is a liar. Oh. I'm only telling you that the information she gave you is what? Is incorrect. Because this was what happened, actually. The man said, mm, he left. I think the day or, a day or two later, they brought the union guys, because apparently they have a workers' union. They came, they sat down. I sat all of them down and I educated them one by one, one, one. I said, look, the first thing I want you to know is that I'm not the kind of doctor you can intimidate. It's too late. I just, I said, no, 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 doctor, we're not here to intimidate you. I said, I just need you to know, first of all, that I'm not that kind of person. And I will tell you exactly what happened. This, 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 I laid it out for them. I said, this was what happened. So please judge for yourselves. The person who was the head of union now came around and said, eh, actually, this case, it's just a misunderstanding, you know. It's just a simple misunderstanding. I think we ought to walk in harmony. Now, English won't start. After all, so you see sometimes, you have to, if that man had sat down to process what the wife had said, he won't just go there and be making noise. And this is how we must be sometimes. You must process your feelings. Don't just act on them. That's not how God made us. For as many are led by the Spirit of God, are called sons of God. Hallelujah. The third one I want to tell, tell you this morning, vocalize them. Vocalize them. Vocalize them. In other words, learn to speak them out. The Bible tells us in Philippians 4, 6, it says, be anxious for nothing. It says, but by prayer and supplication, we thanksgiving. He said, make your request known unto God. In other words, sometimes when you feel hurt, when you feel somebody did something to you don't like, vocalize it to God. Sometimes you have to go to God in prayer. Father, I feel angry. Some of us think that prayer has to be mechanical. It has to be some type of way. Sometimes you have to learn to express yourself to God. Say, Lord, I am sad. Do you know you can say things like that in prayer? Yes. You can go to God in prayer and say, Lord, I'm not happy. I'm sad about the situation. So and so did something to me and I'm hurt about it. Speak to God about it sometimes. 
Instead of acting grumpy, stop carrying face all over the place. Go and say it to the Lord. And guess what? When you say it to the Lord, look at the result. He says, um, with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. He said, make your request known unto God. Now, what's the result? He says, and the peace of God. Ayah, that passes all on us. After you've unleashed to the Lord, guess what? What he will unleash to you, he will unleash peace on you. He says, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your heart. The other word is garrison. It will garrison your heart. It will keep your heart in check. It will put a gate on your heart. So even when envy wants to enter, the gate is there. No way. The peace of God is already in your heart. So that's the reason why when, even when people offend you, you don't need them to apologize to you. Some people, until if he doesn't apologize to me, mm, guess, who, guess who we suffer? You. Because it will eat you on the inside. When somebody offends you, you know there are some people that don't even know they offended you. Do you know that? They don't even count what they did as an offense. And you, you are there carrying your face. Mm, he offended me. I'm not going to talk to him again. Meanwhile, people are moving on with their lives. So if you feel hurt, now let's say for some reason, the person is even an unreasonable person. That you feel like if I talk to this person, because the correct thing to do, if somebody offends you, is to go to them and say, sir, I don't like what you did. And even if you feel like the person is not, go and say to God. Are you following what I'm saying here? Jesus said, if you, if you have a grudge with your brother, don't bother praying. He cannot be answered. Go and settle that quarrel first. Then you can come back and offer your offering. That's what Jesus said. So don't wait for people to apologize. This is the reason why people are hurt. This is the reason why people leave churches today. Because they feel like, oh, the minister so-and-so did something to me. Therefore, I'm not going to that church again. You are deceiving yourself. Because the next church you are going is angels that are there, Abby. Not be human beings, there. Have I not told you before that everybody in church is receiving treatment? <laughs> All kinds of diseases. Some people are responding to treatment. Some people are not responding. In fact, some people, they are, they are, some people are even terminal cases. We're just begging God. Your Bible says, I'm belong. So, you don't need people to apologize to you. To move on. First of all, go and unleash to God. You unleash it to the Lord. Guess what? He garrisons your heart with peace. You're already moving on. They apologize. So, mm, they don't apologize. So, guess what? You, you are moving on with your life. Are you following? If they come, they say, hi, hello. They say, ah, eh, ah. I feel like I did something wrong. So, ah, no, me, I moved on. I'm okay, I'm good. I moved on with my life. Are you following what I'm saying here? Don't, don't be carrying loads that did not put on your head. You say, eh, so bad, so offend me until they, until they tell me sorry. <laughs> Imagine the normal people that offend God every day. If God is carrying it in his mind. Only you will carry several bags of cement on your own head. Out of hurt. So, you don't actually need people to apologize to you, to move on. Are you following what I'm saying? Unleash it to the Lord. Vocalize it. Speak to the Lord about it. And once you speak to him, guess what? The peace of God will garrison your heart. You'll feel the peace of God. And you move on with your life. Don't be there carrying, carrying face, you know. This person, you know. Don't be like that. Vocalize it. The final one. Woo, one hour already. Dear Lord Jesus. Ah. This is the last one. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. We'll end with this one. Ooh, strengthen your spirit through meditation. That's the final one. Strengthen your spiritual meditation. Remember I told you the other time that some, what drives an action from the conscious to the subconscious is what? Repetition, right? Because if it happens again and again, it moves from conscious to subconscious. And that's the same principle of meditation. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, what does it say? This is the book of the law. Shall not depart where? There's a reason for that. A lot of times we just quote it. We don't know what it says. Let's break it down. It says, this book of the law. You know, they didn't have the Bible that time, Abi. What they had was the law, Abi. They had the Torah, the law of Moses. Now, God told Joshua, you want to be successful in life? He said, first, this book of the law shall not depart where? Out of where? Your mouth. He didn't say your heart, first of all. He said, first, out of your mouth. Meaning that you must say it. He said, it must not depart. Meaning that if it's, just not, if it's not going to depart from your mouth, it means that you keep saying it. That's what it means, right? A man of God will say, keep saying it. Don't stop talking it. So you keep saying it again and again and again. So now what happens is that the word of God that you caught in your head will move from your head to your heart because you caught it again and again. Just like when we learned Philippians chapter 3 this morning. I'm sorry, Ephesians chapter 3 this morning. If you pray it every morning, by now you can say it. All right? 
that may be strengthened with might by the Spirit in your inner man, that Christ may dwell in your heart by faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the length and the breadth and the depth and the height, that you know the love of Christ that passes all knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Why can I say it like that? Because I've said it over, I've prayed it over and over. So now it's in my subconscious mind. That's the reason I can quote it the way I'm quoting it. So there is no trick to it. So that's the same way meditation works. Quote it again and again and again. You say it again and again and again. I'm a child of God. I'm the seed of Abraham. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So, the word, so meditation will drive God's word deep into your spirit. Are you following? So now, if, you, if you're feeling something, what do you do? You find the word of God that deals with that situation. Once you get a hold of that word of God, all you, what do you do? That's, this is the power of meditation. You keep saying it again and again and again. You keep saying it again and again and again. Even though the situation is not changing, don't change your confession. Are you following what I'm saying here? Don't change your confession. In fact, sometimes when you say it, that's when the situation wants to get worse. It's getting worse. Guess what? Don't change your confession. Stay there. The Bible talks about Abraham. The Bible says that the guy staggered not in unbelief. The Bible says he did not look at the deadness of his own body, nor the deadness of Sarah's womb. But he said he staggered not in unbelief. But he was strong in faith, the Bible says, giving glory to God. So even though the guy was 70, 80, 90, he didn't have a child. But guess what? He stayed. Because he believed that what God had said, he was going to bring it to pass. So you stay with it. You don't stagger. You don't, you don't doubt. You stay with the word. No matter what happens, I stay. I stay. I stay. That is the power of meditation. Now, as you meditate, guess what happens? Your spirit man becomes stronger. Your spirit man becomes stronger. You saw the little playlist we did last week, right? That is when your spirit man can now shout on your mind and say, no, we are not doing this. Because now your spirit man is now what? Has built some muscles. But if your spirit man is weak, your mind will always take control. This is the problem. I can't help it. Pastor, you understand? Your spirit man is weak. That is where the problem is. Emboldening your spirit. The way, what does your spirit man live by? Your spirit man lives by the word. So what? Get God's word eat deep into your spirit. So sometimes you learn to cram scriptures. Cram scriptures. Are you with me now? Cram scriptures. It will help you in life. Christ in me, the hope of glory. You know, you say it again and again. I have the mind of Christ. Can you say it with me? Say, I have the mind of Christ. Come on, say it like you mean. Say, I have the mind of Christ. Say, Christ in me, the hope of glory. Can you just bow our heads as we pray this morning? Bow your heads as we pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we give you glory and praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.